Welcome back everybody to P2 Aero and the Yamaha Turbo S21 project. It's a pretty exciting day today in the shop as I'm installing this beautiful Skytrax reduction drive for good since all the parts have now come in. I'll be using some footage from the previous video outlining the test fit up that we did a while back with just an empty case since I've already taken some of these things off the engine in order to do that. The first step is to remove the output shaft from the engine. A slide hammer would be ideal if you have one, but as you can see here, I rigged up a lever to pull it out. You're just fighting the seal inside the bore of the engine case, so it doesn't really take a ton of force. After that, I had to phone in a favor from a friend that had a hydraulic shop press that I could use. I didn't film while I was over there, but it looks something like what you're seeing on the screen now. The goal is to remove the shaft and the bearing from the bearing retainer being careful to not use too much force since you can only press on the center of the bearing. Applying some heat to the outside of the retainer should be used to minimize the force needed to free up that bearing. Now, I forgot to remove this seal on the bearing prior to pressing it into the aft case half since I was over at that shop doing it. Luckily it's still possible to get it out after it's installed in the case. The idea here is to allow that gearbox oil to lubricate this bearing during use. Make sure that you bottom out the bearing in the case and don't forget to use heat on the bore and keep that bearing in the freezer just before you press things together to make your life a lot easier and reduce the risk of damaging something. Alright, next is removing that water pump cover and the o-ring seal. Inside you'll see the impeller and the coolant passageways. You'll notice also as this goes back together that I've modified that impeller since I'm testing an electronic water pump so yours won't look like that. There's just a couple things to do on the new water pump housing to get it ready for install. First you'll put those seals in the grooves. I personally like to use petroleum jelly for this purpose. Since I'm still using the throttle body coolant circuit in my build, I'll swap out the plug for a barb fitting and then it's pretty much ready. On the back half of the case, near the bottom, there's another plug that if you're running a temp sensor for the gearbox oil, you can locate it there. I won't be running a temp sensor, so it gets a plug in that spot. And then it's on to applying a thin coat of ultra gray sealant to the outer diameter of the bearing retainer. This is where it meets inside the bore of the engine case. No need for a ton here, just a thin coat. It's fairly self-explanatory, but just for reference, I've marked the countersunk holes for the three different lengths of fasteners in the kit. Two dots stands for the longest, one dot is the medium length, and no dots, well those are for the short ones. I slid two of those long screws in the upper two holes that had two dots slid on the water pump housing. And after warming up the engine case around the bore, I slid the back half of the gearbox into place. You have to index the output shaft with the master spline on the crank or it won't go back in place. I started with the longest bolts first. Every internal fastener here will get some ultra gray under the chamfer of the head and medium strength thread locker and brought up to a torque of 8 foot pounds.
Now in the kit you'll find a support bracket that runs back to the head. I've already got mine in place from the previous test fit up, but that goes on next if you're using it. The instructions do imply that this is really just extra insurance for the turbo models since they do put out more horsepower. This one gets 15 foot-pounds and then on to the set screw for the service port. Just run that one in a little ways at first. Then we're going to install that o-ring for the funnel down in the bottom of the bore, followed by the funnel itself and secure everything in place with the set screw. I made sure to have my cap tightly in place so that I could index the vent hose in the direction that I wanted it to be in the end. Now I already had all this valve cover cap replaced with the one in the kit and my hose cut to length but this is what it looks like all together. And next up is the internal gear set. You start with the center compound gear after ensuring that its bearing race is in place on the back half of the case. Then move on to the lower gear and the dampener. Make sure that the taper of the output shaft is clean and dry, as well as its mating surface inside the gear. And slide it in, aligning the gears as you go. Install the supplied socket head bolt with some medium thread locker and torque it to 38 foot-pounds. I chose to hold the gears from rotating using a plastic brush handle. And I just want to caution you from rotating the engine in the reverse direction as you could cause timing issues that you wouldn't know about until you try to start the engine later. Now it's time for the main seal between the case halves. Like every other seal, I coat it in petroleum jelly to help keep things in place as well as promoting good sealing. Starting up top and working your way around will result in the split of the gasket being up top, which is right where you want it. After ensuring that the bearing race for the top gear in the rear case and the middle gear in the front case are both in place, as well as both alignment dowel pins at the top and the bottom of the rear case, slide the case halves together, aligning the gear teeth as you go. I'll point out where the few oddball fasteners go, but most of them are the same length here. They all get medium thread locker. All the perimeter fasteners get torqued to 9 foot-pounds. Make sure that you go in a diametric pattern, just like if you were torquing a head on a ninja block, starting somewhat in the middle and working out as much as practical. I'm going to give all the sealant and thread locker a few days to set up before I fill it up with oil. But this is the mag drain plug down just below the three sight glass windows. The oil level should be up near the middle of the center window. And while servicing, the small set screw above the windows can be removed to allow air to escape the box. Sliding off the vent line and unscrewing the cap reveals the service port when that need arises. I'm more than pleased with this reduction drive and I encourage anyone considering a Yamaha conversion to go look up Skytrax. You'll find a link in the video description below. I'll leave you with some close-up shots of the finished product. As always, I do appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next one.